Hello everyone, welcome back to Ambitious Nature and today I will be showing you how to stabilize your footage. Um, it gets a little bit tricky, but there's, I promise you it works. <laughs> let's just put it that way. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So DaVinci has multiple different types of uh, stabilizing the footage. Do I know what each one does? Absolutely not. This is something I play around with and it just depends on what it is. And I will explain this and the reasoning why I say I don't know what I'm doing. But um, you have perspective, you have similarity, you have translation. All of this is on the right side of your page and it's underneath your video tab and it shows stabilization. Uh, the reason why I say I don't know what it is is because when you are switching between these three uh, algorithms of stabilization, it's looking at your footage and running a lot of different calculations for it. And so perspective may look better for one image. And even without you changing your camera settings, without changing your frame rates, without changing literally anything, <laughs> for whatever reason, the next clip that you shoot may look better with similarity or it may look better with translation. Um, so you just have to dabble around with it. I typically, for the most part, use perspective. And from my understanding, I think it's doing it based off of what's the main subject. Um, so let's do, let's select, let's make sure that the speed changes are normal and constant. Okay, cool. So let's go back to stabilization and let's select uh, stabilize. As you see, we'll be analyzing the footage, making sure it can do it the best way possible. And it punched in really, really close. This is without stabilization. Hold on, let me go back to this. This is without it, this is with it on. So you see it is a massive, massive difference. Huge, huge difference. And you can of course dial this down, I'll show you how. But let's just watch it through. This is stabilization with it on. So it's actually not bad. I think it's got, um, it's pretty stable. I see a little bit off to the side uh, where it's warping. Let me turn this down. Um, I see it a little bit where it is. See that right there? See how the whole camera shakes? See, I don't like that because she's glitching. So what I can do is go into, let's go to smoothness. Let's increase this a little bit and let's dial down the strength a tad bit. And if you wanted to, you can uncheck zoom to give it a creative style to it. I'll show you what that looks like too. Uh, but I won't do that right now. Um, I'm just gonna smooth it out and lower down the, the strength. Let's restabilize. You see it's a lot faster because it already has it calculated in. Let's play this back. Now we're playing it through. It looks a lot smoother, much, much smoother. You still have normal camera shakes, but it's not as jittery. And as you notice, she's not glitching anymore uh, where she was before. Um, so if I uncheck the zoom, you see the major difference. This is with it on, this is with it off. You'll now start to see what DaVinci Resolve is doing with it. So if I play it back from the beginning, watch the edges, see how it's adjusting the image? This is what it's doing to stabilize the footage. Now it is pretty cool. If you wanted to add like a, I don't know, maybe like a horror film or just do something creative with it, you can uncheck it and leave it the way it is. I'm not aware if any other software does this. All I know is DaVinci can. Um, so you can uncheck it if you want to. Camera lock, if I stabilize this, I believe it does a tad bit different. Actually, let me zoom this back in so I know. It's, it's a tad bit different touch to it, but not a lot. Not really, it's, it's not enough for me to notice the difference, at least with this particular clip. Uh, but you, you get the point, like you can play around with it. Now I can go into um, similarity. Let's do, actually let's duplicate, uh, let me move this back. Let's duplicate you, let's duplicate you, and we'll see what this looks like. Let's go into similarity. Let's go to stabilize. Let's see what we get coming out of here. Bingo. So if you notice right off the bat, similarity looks a lot. Let me see, is it, is it made a difference? Yeah, similarity looks a little bit wider, a little bit wider. So let's play it out and see what it does. This is similarity. And you see it's taking out, I think, a lot more of the jitters. It's not as wobbly when it comes to the camera image, and it still looks stable. She's not really doing any weird artifacts. His body is still staying intact. So I think similarity looks a little bit better. Just for fun, 
we'll do a translation and see what this does. And sometimes I've, I haven't really used, well, I haven't really used similarity. I've used translation and I believe, pers pers ah, I can't even talk right now, perspective the most. Uh, translation will be like my second pick. Uh, and it just depends on, uh, the R6 has like this wobble effect. So let me go back to, and I'll show you what translation looks like. But it does this, um, see this door it to it? No, it's not. Let's go back to, oh, let's turn off the zoom. That's what it is. So you see how the camera's doing this effect like that? My, or not just my camera, but the R6, the Sony cameras, like anything that has IBIS, it, it, it does like that weird push and pull and I hate it. And so I'm trying to eliminate that as much as possible. Let me just check this back on. And so translation, typically, not all the time, but translation usually gets that wobble effect down just right. So let's go back and check this on and let's see what translation looks like. Translation looks pretty smooth, looks natural. I don't think I see any jitters. Yeah. I mean, it's not far off from similarity. Yeah, as you can see, it is it's a little bit different in terms of the stylistic look. Um, this clip obviously doesn't, it's good because it wobbles, but but it's hard to describe. When, you, when you're when actually filming things because you're not using, or you can use a stock footage to play around with. I pulled this from DaVinci's uh, or Blackmagic website. Um, but uh, with your own footage, you may find out that translation looks better or perspective looks better or similarity looks better. Uh, but regardless, this is your version of stabili stabilization. And to me, I think it works a lot better than what I used with Adobe, which was warp stabilization. Because with warp stabilization, it would do this warping, like it would, it would get it right, but it would still mess up and have a lot of different artifacts. I think DaVinci's AI within the, um, the gyroscope of the image and um, just in general, taking it from an image that is an MP4 that's not uh, raw or anything like that, it still does a pretty solid job. Granted, these are B-Raw files. Um, but yeah, this is a quick video as to how to stabilize your footage within DaVinci. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and let me know your comments below uh, if this helps out or if you have any questions or if you have any other tutorials that you would like me to speak on. So please keep me updated. I will keep you updated. I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace out.